This episode of Prim's Hood Cinema is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark uses their top-notch, uncrackable encryptions to secure all your data and protect your IP address anytime you go online. It's important to get a VPN, bro. Hackers and scammers have so many different ways to get your private info in today's world. It's crazy. Don't let them steal all your money, bro. Look, my bank account, I got 300 <laughs> Surfshark will secure unlimited devices at the same time with just one account. You can use it on your phone computer, laptop, tablet, iPad, PlayStation, Xbox, Apple TV, all that dog. All that dog. And it's super fast and easy to use. Just a few clicks and you've got the ultimate IP and DNS leak protection. It's pretty cool. Nobody can find your IP address. You're so safe, bro. They've got super fast servers all across the world. So you can choose a different IP address and unlock all different types of region locked content on all your favorite streaming platforms. It even comes with an ad blocker to block malicious ads and malware and all that nonsense. You can reach your favorite websites and services even if they're banned in your country. And Surfshark has a strict 100% no logging policy too, so they can't keep any of your data either. It comes with a 30 day money back guarantee as well as 24 7 customer support. Go to surfshark.deals slash hoodcinema and use my promo code hoodcinema. The link is in the description for you. You'll get 83% off and 3 extra months free. Again, it's 83% off and 3 extra months free. That's a good deal, bro. You're a lucky person. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring the video. I love you. Okay, let's start the video now. It starts off with Terrence Howard in his car doing this pimp monologue or whatever. He plays a pimp named DJ and he lives in Memphis with his three favorite hoes. I meant sex workers, they sex workers. I like this little pimp speech that he does here too. It's like the perfect way to open the movie. It really sets the tone. Man ain't like it though. And when I say man, I'm talking about man is in mankind. He know about death. Had him a sense of history. We ain't gonna get no move on in this world lying around the sun licking our ass all day. The whole speech is just one of his many pimp manipulation tactics. He trying to sweet talk the girl into selling more ass or whatever for him. It's a good opening. What's up with his hair though? Is this how everybody in Memphis look? Is this modern times, bro? What time period is this? You a old Smokey Robinson head ass nigga. Old doo-wop head ass nigga. Four tops head ass nigga. Nah, I'm only joking. I get it, bro. It's pimp culture. What's happening with you, man? It break down like this. 20 in the front, 40 in the back. Nigga, oh my God, raise your prices, bro. $20? That's nothing. How are you paying your bills like this? Hey, 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 Everybody's favorite funk singer slash Scientologist Isaac Hayes is in the movie. He's trying to kick one of these filthy non-believers out of his bar. DJ helps him out real quick, then sells him some weed. Isaac Hayes tells DJ that he's having a huge 4th of July party and invites him to come through and sell some more weed and make some more money. I'm not scared of that. Skinny black. Yeah, that, yeah, I know who Skinny is, man. I know Skinny from way back in the day. Best get your ass up here with that good shit. Those boys don't want none of this dirty weed. Get on, shut DJ goes to the strip club now so he can pick up his main sex worker hoe. Her name is Lexis and she real mean all the time to DJ and the other sex workers. She's played by Paula Jai Parker. She's basically female Samuel Monroe Jr. She in the hella hood movies. She always evil or like a thought or something. I used to beat my meat to her, bro. I'm not gonna bullshit you. She an all-star. Not cause of that though. She a good actor. I ain't working day shift no more. You know, if I known y'all was gonna she take this, she made $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500. $500.
I can't be standing in line how they do that. Not if I got Roger. Hey, hey, they're gonna skin the black. They all go home and DJ's still playing with his new keyboard. Also, Taraji P. Henson is here too. She in the movie. She one of the sex workers, but she on maternity leave now or whatever. She got pregnant by some random trick. She don't know who it is. Sad hood movie. Alexis barges into DJ's studio or his pimp office or whatever this little room is and she drops off her baby so she can take a shower. Hey, bitch, you gotta go take a shower, man. You relax your ass, man. Hey, get rid of them tears, man. Cut them tears shit out, man. Do that. What's this right here? Come on, we just come on, no, man. He's okay. Come on, we do. He don't need to be playing. Now, see, you. that's what I'm talking about, man. Tell him you gonna get that little boy a twitch. I really miss my nigga. They go to the store and they run into one of DJ's old friends from school. His name Anthony Anderson. Him and DJ used to make music in school together once upon a time. I remember Coach Rose Allen used to let you flow with the intercom in gym class. We used to spin them little records at the after school joint. Then Anthony Anderson takes DJ to one of his recording sessions. Anthony Anderson records stuff for a living. And this is another good ass scene, bro. Terrence Howard a good actor, bro. If you Cut them tears shit out. DJ's having a midlife crisis and he decides he wants to change everything and become a rapper at like 40 years old. That's kind of way too old, bro. Why don't you do something else, nigga? I just don't know what I'm supposed to supposed to do. Amen. Damn. What the hell you doing here, DJ? Just, just listen to what I got here, man. All right? Just listen to it. These bitches pop it for some paper, pop that ass for some cash flow. Do it like I like it, and I give you what you ask for. Get a nigga mix, grab her by the hand, take her back for some condom bro. Shake it, shake it real fast. Put your hands on your knees. Shake it, shake it, shake it real fast. DJ drops his bullshit ass freestyle in the kitchen, and Anthony Anderson likes it, I guess. So he agrees to be DJ's producer or engineer or something. I don't know. Uh, Anthony Anderson must be having a midlife crisis too, or something. Why would you agree to this, sir? This nigga showed up at your house with a fucking leapfrog piano and two prostitutes. You must have really liked that song or something. Shake it, shake it real fast. Shake it, shake it real fast. Seriously, though, he came in here rapping to a pre-made salsa beat on a children's keyboard. Why would you not kick him out immediately? Imagine somebody really doing this to you. That's insane, right? Shake it, shake it real fast. They have a little montage of DJ turning his pimp office into a recording studio. Their plan is to make a whole mixtape and give it to Ludacris at the 4th of July party. Also, this soft ass white dude joins their rap crew. His name's Shelby. Apparently he's friends with Anthony Anderson and he makes beats and shit. He's played by hood legend DJ Qualls. You might remember him from some other random movies. He's always a stoner or a deadbeat or whatever. He always look young and old at the same time. He a true white nigga. We want radio play, right? And man, you got a song called Beat That Bitch. You better say something different other than Beat That Bitch. What would you say? Huh? Stomp that hole. <laughs> boom, boom. There you go. Whoop that trick, get a whoop that trick, get a whoop that trick, get a whoop that trick. Get a whoop that trick. Woo! Say, that's the night, and I came to bring the tank, and I own my chest, got me busting at you lemon lane. It's only the beginning, I got a lot to say. It's been a long time, and you got hell to pay. Whoop that trick, get him whoop that trick, get him whoop that trick. Damn, I'm not gonna lie, that beat is amazing, bro. This is definitely the best song on the whole entire soundtrack. Well, second best. It's right up there next to everybody's favorite song from this movie. Shake it, shake it real shake it, fast. Shake it real fast. Let's get serious for a second. Let's talk about these mediocre bars, though. DJ, that's my name, and I came to bring the pain, bro? Are you serious? That's not good enough, bro. And what in the fuck is a lemon lame? Memphis niggas, please help me. Is that a real thing, or did he make that up just now? Is like lemon lime soda? Please tell me. I got a job. I restock vending machines. Really? I'm alone all day and I smell like <laughs> like sticky buns and skittles. <laughs> I thought my job sucked. <laughs> uh bitch, 
Stop it. That shit is a thousand times better than your job. Don't even do that. That's my son. Where the hell you been at, DJ? Hmm? You ain't never gonna be nothing more than what you is right now. Go and get my car for me. You heard me gone now, little bitch. Keep this. Oh, oh shit! Damn! You and me? We done, okay? Lexus starts tripping and she being a lemon lame, so DJ kicks her out of the house. And with Taraji P. Henson still pregnant, now he only got one sex worker left. And he real sad about that. He don't know what he gonna do about money and stuff now. It's pretty hard out here for a sex worker manager. But I gotta stay paid, gotta stay above wall. Couldn't keep up with my hoes, that's when shit got harder. I'm hoping every night they don't end yeah, up being on. dead. They trying to create their next single now, but they not in the right mood anymore. Plus, DJ doesn't know what the fuck he's doing at all. He's a terrible rapper. He doesn't know anything about rapping. Yeah, D, what he's saying is that we ain't got a hook. Well shit, give it some hook then. They get Taraji P. Henson to do a feature now. She don't got no bars though, and it's pissing DJ off. You know it's hard out here for a pimp. Push that shit out. You know it's hard out here for a pimp. When he trying to get this money for the rent. She ends up doing a good job and Shelby and Anthony Anderson mix it up or whatever. Now it's time for DJ to record his part, but his neighbor DJ Paul is blasting his music too loud. I know you may, we done had words in the past and some of them weren't too friendly. But a gesture of neighborly friendliness. DJ Paul is here from 3-6 Mafia. He in the movie for like a second. 3-6 Mafia wrote all the music for this, by the way, if you didn't know that. They did a good ass job too. They even got an Oscar off this shit for writing that iconic pimp anthem, Shake It, Shake It Real Fast. Shake it, shake it real fast. What? Yeah, wait, man, I got another verse, man. Anthony Anderson stops the whole song, though, in the middle of a recording, and he says they need some new microphones. They go to the microphone store now, and DJ don't got enough money for the microphone he needs, but that's okay. He's got something better than money, I guess. Okay. I'll take the money, though. Don't ever do that to me again, D. What, man? I was gonna give you what you know. Every time you come, you got something for me. You got something for me. Everybody's got something to do. Everybody's got something important going on in their life, but me, D. They have another montage now. They record some more songs with their new microphone. Anthony Anderson's wife comes over and she joins their rap crew now. And now they finally finish their tape and they ready for the 4th of July party. But the closest ones do me know I'm holding it down. You gon' feel me one day, we gon' be hurting the town. Taraji P. Henson goes up to DJ before he leaves and she gives him this fake ass, dumb ass looking chain and she tells him she believes in him and shit. I mean, I'm... I know y'all gonna be moving on and uh, moving up and D, I need you to know what meant the world to me. Come on, man. Wow, check it out. Okay, look at DJ. I'll put some extra demos in the car, right, man? Hold up a sec. Nigga. Oh, no. I cannot believe you kissing this bitch on the mouth right now. If I'm being frank like shit, nah, that's not fair though, man. I'm sorry. Go ahead and kiss her, bro. I'm just saying. Damn, bro. I think you know my man, DJ. Man, I don't know this nigga, man. Best place to keep Memphis is in my rear view, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Whoever the fuck you is. This is the man I was telling you about. Boy, Arnell here say you slanging that killer. Baby, you be just that. Ludacris at the party being a lemon lame, so DJ's gotta pull out all his pimp tactics now. He's got one of Ludacris' super old mixtapes and he gives him this profound ass pimp speech. Also, is that Juicy J, bro? What the fuck? I never even noticed that. And one day this whole motherfucking place is gonna be gone and they gonna start digging. You know they gonna dig up the pyramids over in Egypt. Wanna know about Memphis? All they gotta do is find your first underground tape, nigga. These niggas best friends now. They get drunk and they hang out together all through the night. DJ finally gives Ludacris his midlife crisis tape and it's a happy ending now. What the fuck I'm gonna do with a cassette tape, man? I, guess, I don't even have a cassette tape player. How'd it go? Play it. 
Play the like a pro, man. All that boy gotta do is just play the damn thing, and it's gonna be undeniable, man. I think you're gonna have to get your weed from some other hustler, man. <laughs> Nigga, calm down. I get that you had a good conversation with him, but you're getting way too ahead of yourself. This nigga told you he didn't have a cassette player. He's clearly not gonna listen to this. One <laughs> day you and me gonna be on tour, man. I ain't gonna do this shit for you. Tour? What <laughs> shit, tour? man. You tell me this shit just fell out your pocket, man. Suck my dick. Ludacris ends up throwing DJ's mixtape in the motherfucking toilet? God damn, that's hella disrespectful. That's so gangster. DJ goes crazy and he beats the shit out of Ludacris in the bathroom. One of Ludacris' friends comes in and he sees what happened and now they having a final climactic shootout. <laughs> Hey bro, you know what I was thinking? What if that shit really did fall out his pocket the whole time? And he just drunk as hell and he didn't mean it. I'm sure that's not the case though. This nigga pulled the fucking little strip out and everything. But on the bright side, now you can make a diss track about this nigga. Everybody love diss tracks. Do it, man. Oh, sugar, it's okay. Hey, wait, what the fuck's up now, nigga? Nelly, you in charge of shit, alright? You hear me? You my partner. I know. Say I'm in charge. I'm in charge. <laughs> wow. They didn't really handcuff this nigga. He's just holding this shit in his hand the whole time. I don't understand that. Why did they just really handcuff him for real? DJ goes to jail now. All his friends are real sad. It's a sad ending. They do a time jump and Anthony Anderson comes to visit DJ in jail. He tells DJ that Taraji P. Henson had her baby and he updates him about everything going on outside. Hey, how's Nolan, man? Nolan. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> We can't lay around licking our ass all day like a dog, you know? She hit every shake joint, radio station in Memphis, and then some. High 107.1, number one for hip hop. It's your man, Boogaloo, holding you down. Walk that trick! Walk that trick! Hey man, this is me, I made it! Walk that trick! She tops off a bunch of radio hosts and eventually she gets whooped that trick on the radio. It's a touching moment, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I be getting choked up at this part all the time. And it's the cat who stomped on Skinny with that whoop that trick song. We in the rap game too. You know what I'm saying? I stage name, 5 -0. They call me Big 5 -0. Check out our demo and tell us what you think. Everybody gotta have a dream. And with all that being said, that's the story of how Rick Ross started his rap career. That's what the whole movie was about. Fun facts. Fuck with me, DJ. Shut the fuck up, man. You know, I don't want to be too hasty, but I've been feeling this way for some years now. I think this is my favorite movie, bro. Like, all-time favorite movie. It's entertaining, it's inspiring, but above all that, it's just really authentic, man. I love that. There's certain shit in this world that's really hard to truly capture and recreate. I think the life of a real, dirty South pimp is one of those things that's probably hard to recreate. But they did it, man. Everybody feels so genuine. Terrence Howard especially. He killed this shit, bro. He feels like a 100% real pimp. This is one of his first big leading roles, and that shit definitely paid off. Fun fact, he actually lived with a few different pimps in Memphis trying to perfect this role. He lived with these niggas for months, bro. That's hella dedication right there. I definitely recommend this movie if you haven't seen it. It's definitely a classic. It's got a great soundtrack too. Even though I wasn't actually crazy about Terrence Howard's rapping, that shit was a little awkward. But even still, it's a fantastic movie. Another fun fact, the Whoop That Trick beat was actually made by Lil Jon, which makes hella sense now. It sounds exactly like a Lil Jon beat. It's a good movie. It's my favorite movie, probably. Either this or Baby Boy. I don't know. Anyway, shut up. The video over now. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to me for more hood movie recaps. Follow me on Instagram. Follow my other YouTube channel. I do stuff on there too. Thanks again to Surfshark also for sponsoring. Make sure you check them out if you need a VPN. Link in the description. I'll be back soon. Okay, so. <laughs> Shit out. Shake it, shake it real fast. Shake it, shake it real fast. Pop it for some paper, pop that ass for some cash flow. Do it like I like it, and I give you what you ask for. Grab her by the hand, take her 
back for some time, bro. Drop a couple grams, now you're back. 